Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast, where we take you inside our gym, CrossFit Palm Beach, each week. It's here that we are creating new superhumans every day, transforming people's lives, helping them reach a level of health they never knew possible. We strive to answer your most burning questions on fitness, health, nutrition, training, motivation, mindset, lifestyle, and more. If you have a question, please email us at info at CrossFitPalmBeach.com. You can also learn more on our blog, livingsuperhuman.com. And if you have a moment, we'd love a review from you on iTunes. All right, it's time. Let's stop being average and start living superhuman. Hello and welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew Frezza and I am joined today by Whitney Stevenson, Austin Vettigrew, Tony Frezza, and you have reached us for the Core Values Podcast. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about um, some of our core values that uh, Tony and I set about two years ago and have really um, defined a lot of the ways that we make business decisions, how we run the gym. Um, how we speak to our coaches, how we speak to the members, and um, just things that we, we really value a lot in our lives. Some of the things are things that we've valued our entire lives, and it's something that has been really important to us, been kind of a staple in our development as people and as coaches. Other things are things that are newer, things we've picked up in books, um, and other things are things that are almost more like reminders to Tony and I. And, um, when we get off track, these core values really keep us on track. So I think uh, some of these things will be really valuable to you guys um, for your own lives, whether that be in work, personal lives, and then other things will just kind of give you a glimpse into how we run the gym and why we run the gym this way. Um, so yeah, I think um, if, you know, some, at some point or in some way someone's in charge, you're in charge of something, right? You're in charge of a kid, you're in charge of your job, a business maybe like having those core values to guide you is so important. Like we find it in our meetings all the time. We have these problems come up and it's easy, it's convenient to like be like, wow, that like fits under that core value. And like we have an answer, you know, rather trying to like troubleshoot something for hours, we really just come back to our values a lot. And I think for anyone that's in charge of, you know, their family or business, like set those core values like as soon as possible. They will get refined over time, you know, you can take another months or years to refine them, but try to get them set yeah, we, we were prompted from the book Traction, um, which if you have your own business or if you um, have a team of people that you work with, I would highly recommend that book. Um, but basically, they, you know, simple exercise you can do on your own. You spend a couple hours, get some stuff jotted down, and then just kind of let it marinate for days and weeks. And I mean, it was probably, we originally did this about two years ago, but it was probably six months after that till we really had something that was like, concrete and we felt confident like yeah this is what we really stand for and um, this is what we want to to run our lives by so um, the first one our first CFPB core value is we are a family and things that kind of fall under this is like introducing yourself to others knowing everyone by name um, treating people like a guest in your home um, when we have new people that show up for the first time cleaning up after yourself and, and always leaving the gym better than when you walked in. Um, and then there's this quote that's really good, which is uh, from Greg Glassman, the founder of CrossFit. And he says, we are not in the phys fitness business, we are in the relationship business. And that's something that we really uh, believe in first and foremost is fitness is kind of a byproduct of, of one, having a great program in CrossFit. And then we feel like if we can make people feel welcome, get to know them, that at some point they're going to stick around long enough where they just inevitably get fit. So, <laughs> happened to me, I think. <laughs> Literally, I think it happened to me. Because <laughs> I remember I moved up here and I was looking for a gym to go to and I wasn't like kind of sold on coming here. I don't even think I took a class. I think I just came to Open Gym to like check it out. And then I forget who I talked to first. I think it was you. I think it was we me. talked yeah. for a while and then I didn't really come back. And then you called me, and I was like, oh, he's calling me. <laughs> what is this about? 
And then it really made me feel like, wow, he kind of cares that I was there. Like, he really wants me to like try out this competitor's class on Saturday. I guess I'm going to do that. And so, um, yeah. And then that that started a huge like domino effect. And every time I think about somebody walking into the gym as a coach, I think about like that conversation, and I think about like the follow up, um, really the follow up. So like. I know that was so important for me to like feel cared about. So like even though you can like see people and I see people and meet them for the first time, that check in like that second day or third day or the next time I see them, I always try to like hit that because I know how impactful it was for my decision to come here. Because at this point in my life, this gym was like 45 minutes away from where I was living, and you know, had that phone call not happened, I don't know that I would be here. So. I just think it's it's important, and, and because it was important to me, I try to like play it off on other people. Austin, you're kind of new here. Do you feel yeah. do you feel the family vibe? For sure. Mm. Um, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. He's like, no, not really. <laughs> this is a core value of yours. <laughs> they were you know that. <laughs> no, so my yes, like as a, as a whole, like coming in here, like with the members, like of course, but like my story is a little bit different, I guess. Like I felt it from the top down a little bit. So it started out with. Andrew and I getting in communication via email, that went to like FaceTime, just a bunch of different options, but uh, we were in a situation where we could basically take any step we wanted to as far as where we wanted to be, what job we wanted, and we wanted to make sure we found the right one. So um, as much as he was interviewing us, I feel like we were doing the same thing. So like all the core values, everything I had already known and read into, and I basically listened to every podcast like beforehand, like I was very invested in like making sure this was it. And I think like the, the final straw of like, okay, this is like definitely like where we want to be, what we want to do was Andrew just like inviting us into his house. Like for the first trip down, he's like, you can stay with me, my wife and my kid. Like that kind of commitment is pretty heavy as someone you don't really know. So like that, that like made a big impact on us and like, okay, these people trust us and they want us to grow and succeed. So yeah, that was a big part of it. Definitely. Cool. Entered the family. Literally. You live to, so, live to tell about yeah. it. <laughs> We're still here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny from like a training perspective too. Like, the first thing we talk about is like I'm asking him like how many names do you know? How many names of people do you know yeah. in class? Like, we're talking about that multiple times before we're even talking about like what his squat looks like or how he would coach someone else. So. Um, we've talked about in meetings like you can't coach someone well until you know their name. And I think we all would sort of self-proclaim that we're all bad with names, yet we put a ton of effort into learning names and remembering names. And, and you know, we know if, if we can remember someone's name the second time they come in, that's a huge step in that relationship. And you can then, you're gonna be such a better coach to that person um, in the short term and the long term, just from knowing their name and using their name and, and not just saying buddy or chief or whatever it might be, <laughs> <laughs> pal. <laughs> All those different things that you know, it just it it it's uh, it's too surface level and doesn't show that you care. Yeah. yeah, we want people to want to come here, like you know, where they're like, I just have to get to my place. This is where like this is my people, and I want to be them, be around them. Yeah, like the, a few of the things I include in here are really reminders to me. Like Tony and I are both pretty introverted naturally. So, um, you know, the, the concept of introducing yourself to others and being proactive like that, it is 100% a reminder to me to do that because it's not in my natural state. Even after seven years of doing this, like, um, I, I, I have to kind of force myself to do it. It feels good once I do do it, but it's not something that comes natural. And um, I heard it on another podcast of this idea of going first is be the person that goes first. Say hi at the grocery store. Say hi when you see someone in the gym. And I, I try to do that as much as possible um, because I, I know how much it can make people feel welcome. And I encourage you guys to do that in your lives is to try to just to be the person that goes first because everyone wants to, to be liked and, and, and have you know, positive relationships when they're everywhere. And you know, if you can be that person that goes first, you're gonna make people feel welcome um, and they're gonna, they're gonna wanna spend time around you. So. A great book to learn more about that and something that was recommended to me when we first started the gym. Um, so one of the members made a comment that I came off as cocky and I, I'm quiet and I, see, I always saw that as being humble. Um, but he's like, you know, you should read How to Win Friends and, and Influence People. And it's kind of like humbling to get that recommendation. You should read How to Win Friends. Like, <laughs> okay, like, thanks. Like, <laughs> 
I have a lot of friends here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that book was really um, <clears throat> eye-opening and life-changing. And I highly recommend it to anyone that's in a you know, personal relationship business, which is almost every business. Yeah. All right, so number two, our number two core value is really specific to CrossFit, and it's the class comes first. And um, there's a couple of things that come with that, which is we feel like this should be the best hour of someone's day, or, or the best 90 minutes of, of their day, because a lot of people are hanging around with us before and after class. And, and we really want to create an atmosphere where people love coming, they never want to leave. Um, they have basically three main spaces in their life. They have home, they have work, and they have CrossFit Palm Beach. And we want to be the place that's, that's their favorite of the three, that they enjoy coming to and they never want to leave. So we really, we know that the, the bread and butter of that is the in-class experience. So for us, we're constantly putting that class experience first. We never want to lose that. We never want to prioritize other things that could interfere with that really good class experience. Yeah, talking about how we bring up values in our meetings with the problems that might arise, this is the one we go back to a lot. You know, like, um, you know, I had a problem with so-and-so dropping weights during class. The class comes first. You know, and we just always come back to this one and, and prioritizing the class because it takes a lot of work to make sure you have an amazing experience in that hour. Yeah, we've, we've used it with equipment purchases. Like, we won't get certain things because it's like, will that work with a class of 30 people? If the answer is no, a lot of times you don't buy it. Like, Beach Fit was, the program was growing like crazy and we had a lot of, like, we had a lot of extra stuff over there. Whiteboards in the corner, we had jerk blocks over there. And we know, like, a lot of people like Whitney use jerk blocks. Zach's using jerk blocks for his training, but it's like, the class has to come first. We need that space for Beach Fit. We need to get all the square footage we can. So stuff like that, the, the, the decision becomes very clear, where in the past, it would be, there'd be a lot of confusion on our part. And it's, it's been the value that's probably been the most actionable for us, is having that, that class comes first. You guys uh, see any? <laughs> Whitney's <laughs> bitter about the jerk there. block. So. Yeah. No, I'm not bitter. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I mean, this is my, that's my, that's this, like, this is my job and like this is my space also, but like training is my space. So wherever I need to train, I take care of that for me. So if I don't have jerk blocks here, I find jerk blocks somewhere else or I make them with plates. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I won't use the small 12 Break. inch boxes anymore Break that I them. broke. But, but that, that's because of my goals. Like I have specific goals for, that aren't for everyone um, and and I'm on a path to get them. That doesn't mean that I, I, I don't want to take away from anybody's best hour of their day. If I never had that best hour of my day, I wouldn't have the goals that I have now. So for me, they go hand in hand. It's very important to take care of that because if I never had that class experience or that great experience in the beginning, I wouldn't be on the journey I'm on. So for mm -hmm. me to disrespect that for somebody else, it's sort of like disrespecting myself and I'm just not that kind of person. I, I care more about other people than me, even in the middle of like my training. Like it is my time and my hour, but like I will do what I can to be respectful of other people for sure. Um, and I, I just think it's really important. I think that like any kind of like individual programming and all of the stuff that like elite athletes do, yeah, it's, it's very different, but it's, it's a nod or like a nod of the hat or whatever that's called. It is CrossFit. It all began with a class at some point. So you can't discredit that. The class is so important, so. Yeah, I just think that like, like you're saying, that 90 minutes is like so beneficial to not only um, maybe you as a person like emotionally or obviously physically, but like that's your time to also like meet new people, um, create those friendships that like have made this place a family, literally. So like for me, like, I will only take the classes because that's not only my time to remember names, start learning names, there's 500 of them to try to remember, but um, I can connect with them on a different basis. Maybe it's the workout or how they felt during the workout or, yeah, we worked out with the same weight. Like, I'm a coach, but we're doing the same thing. Like, I think it's, a, it's super important. And the fact that we keep it that way uh, with the class being first, it also keeps the coach super interested and not only interested but like aware of what's going on they don't have to worry about the plates slamming in the back but like that one second they look over and completely forget what was going on in the class like so it allows them to stay on task and just the whole experience 
be on point. Yeah, I think too, like the emphasis that like you guys put into like programming and making and designing the class to improve everyone's fitness is important and like that's why you take the class. Like that's why I try to hop in the class like when I can. Um, it just you're not you if you have owners that are like, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna do something else, it just is funny. It's weird. It's not it's like I don't know, Ben's podcast is great when he uses the example about uh, an air uh, pilot taking a different airline, not flying his own airline. It's like, well, should I really be getting on this plane? Like, yeah. you know, it just kind of puts thoughts in your head that maybe something is amiss. And because you guys all take the classes, I do it when I can. And I think it just goes to show that we can speak to what we're putting on the whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I mean, I, it's funny because I see a lot of gym owners, they create something that's for this sort of imaginary person. Like they create this thing and then they, they don't do it themselves because they kind of have this imaginary like avatar in their head. And for Tony and I, we are literally trying to create our dream gym that us as members want to show up to every single day. You know, more so than us as owners want to show up to, we're trying to create the dream gym that us as athletes would love to show up to every single day that we feel welcome in. And that's, yeah, that, that's, for us, it's the class, you know, that's how we fell in love with it. So the class comes first. Mm -hmm. So number three is team over individual, um, putting a relentless focus on others over yourself, um, not having any egos. Um, as a coach, our, our coaches, we ask them to put their coaching before their own training. And then we ask our coaches to regularly take classes with members. And that allows us to have like discussions with our coaching team every week in our meetings. We talk about the things that went right and what could be better um, in our classes for that week. Um, and th this, this one for us, Tony and I both grew up playing a lot of team sports. Primarily baseball was our main sport. And we both played on plenty of teams that had all the talent in the world that did nothing. And we played on teams where you looked at every individual on that team and no one was exceptional, but as a team they were incredible and they were unbeatable and I think we we both really enjoy being a part of a team we we love seeing like that ability where the part the whole is greater than the sum of the parts and uh, you know for us it's it, it becomes apparent when you see a CrossFit class one of the things that I notice and this is more of a subtle thing most people probably wouldn't notice this is like from a athlete's perspective when you have an athlete who shows up and they're encouraging others in the gym they're uh, asking questions, they're coachable, they're high-fiving others, they're, when it's a partner workout, they're quick to partner up with someone else, they're sort of open to that idea. Those people do better than the ones who are just focused on, am I getting what I need to get out of this experience? And it's crazy, by, by coming in wanting to give to the community as a whole, you get more in return. It's this abundance mindset. Yeah, it's uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, don't wish that the person next to you is going to go slower so that you can win. Wish that they're going to go faster because that, that they push you faster. I might right? have done that to Austin today. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, work. It didn't work. Hopefully he pushed you to go faster. <laughs> no, I, I, I think this one has been huge since I've been here. It's like there, there could even be something that we like disagree on in one of our meetings. But like as a team, we have to come together and see something completely through the exact same way. We can't be giving like missed messages to different individuals or different athletes. I think that part has been huge. Um, regardless of it's trying to create a better warm up or maybe it's a nutrition thing that we different we have different opinions on, but we have to come together for the best for the individuals or our clients or our members. Um, but do it as a team so that we're all giving the same message. And I think we'll get into it on the next one, but. We're just trying to get better every step of the way. Like we don't expect ourselves to be perfect now, but we're on that journey to get perfect as a team together. I remember one comment that Danielle made when she first started was, she's like, I tried to take every coach's classes and it's amazing how it's consistent yeah. across the board. And I think that's one thing that the members see as a concrete thing is like, I think for the most part, they feel like I can show up to any given class on any given day and have not just a good experience, but a, a fairly consistent experience. It's not going to feel so different because I came to 7 a.m. today versus my, my 5 a.m. class. And not to say that the, the coaches don't have their own nuances, that you might like certain coaches over another, but I think the overall experience mm -hmm. is consistently good across the board because of that. 
I mean, it's better if you have Whitney, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you get that. Oh, you're coaching us today. Or you get, oh, you're coaching us today. <laughs> uh, anything else on team over individual? I think following up on that one just one more time is I don't think members should be afraid to ever ask us a question regardless of where we are. And I think I've noticed that a couple of times, like, like maybe I'm getting ready to jump into class and they're kind of like, oh, well, you go work out. Like, no, like, what do you need? Because I'm here for you. Like, this is just my free time. Whereas them coming to work out is like a slice out of their day. I'm here all the time. So it's a little bit different. So like, an example is like, right after class, like helping Marty like try to figure out her handstand push-ups. Like, that's not like me working hard. Like, that's something I want to do. Like, it has nothing to do with, am I getting ready to jump into class or not? And I think all of the coaches do that and do it very well. And they're not afraid to stop whatever they're doing to help. Yeah, cool. Uh, number four is a constant and never ending pursuit of excellence. And this is, you know, probably something that shows up in every sort of business's values. Um, but for us, it means paying attention to the details and going above and beyond what's asked, um, being early, being over prepared for things. And one of the examples that came to mind is I've been spending a lot of time trying to hire lately because um, we had lost a few coaches. And it's funny what you get in an application and job applications, you get multiple applications. And, you know, Austin was the example is that, I mean, he went above and beyond. Like his first email to me was, you know, I resonate with your core values. I listen to some of your podcasts. I think I could be a good fit for these, these reasons where most people, you can see it's a cut and pasted thing. And they might have, a, they might actually have a resume that's pretty substantial. They might have from the CrossFit standpoint, several years of experience, maybe owned a gym, manage a gym. They might have done the level two or level three, but it's like they couldn't take the time to personalize that note beyond just like, oh, I, I like the application. And it's, uh, I think that's something that people can take anywhere. Like if you're applying to jobs, apply to two and do it right rather than applying to 20. Um, but I think there's a million different ways that people can go above and beyond or pay attention to those details. Um, what are what examples do you guys come to mind for you? The first one I was thinking of is just the detail that we put into one class, like every day, is insane. I was, I was just laughing yesterday. We sat through like our programming meeting, and it ends up being like three to four hours of us just going back and forth on like one or two workouts, which is funny. But we like want it to be that good, and then we'll write all the notes. And then we'll fix those notes. So this programming that is literally a week and it's just one workout takes us almost a day to even get halfway where we want it. And then we'll still switch it in between there. It's like how important that little detail of how the class flows, the experience that everyone, everyone is going to have means like a lot to us. And we want to continue making that better and better. That's just the, the point I was thinking of right off the bat. Yeah. And also like we clarify that pursuing excellence is different than chasing perfection right where we know like we'll never be we'll never be perfect like we just can't be but we can try to be excellent and be more excellent with every day um, and then talking about like coaches preparing their warm-ups and stuff like a lot of thought goes into that and also like coaches don't go that's the perfect warm-up like don't you dare change it like we're welcoming feedback like how did it go how did it go this morning could it be better and they, we come out of classes saying you know what I would change this like I thought it was great, I thought it was excellent, but you know, you should probably change this. And the coach is open to feedback because they know nothing's perfect. One way I've seen this like kind of evolve over the years is like uh, just like staging the gym. Like you'll see us put a lot of time and attention into that. Um, you know, staging the gym, make sure it flows, make sure if we do have a class of like 35 people, we're prepared when that comes in. And you know, there's still days where that that doesn't always happen perfectly, especially with uh, the big 5 a.m. classes we sometimes have or 5.30 in Beach Fit, but um, we're constantly trying to make it better. And when something goes wrong, we're trying to figure out how can we prevent that from happening the next time around. All right, so number five is extreme ownership of everything in your life. And this one was really inspired by Jocko Willink, who wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. That's where we got that phrase of of extreme ownership and there's a lot of things that fall under that like living with honesty and integrity not gossiping um, and, and being willing to have 
uh, difficult or uncomfortable conversations to be able to communicate to the people around you of what you're feeling because people don't always know what's going on inside your head, your mind. Um, so trying to just over communicate things as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, I think I th that was one of the things and even going back, it kind of goes along with the last one is I'm like looking for Andrew or Tony like as soon as the workout's over for them to like give me some feedback regardless of what it is. I'm like searching for that so that I can continue progressing and taking ownership of like my class. Like was that the best I could do? Was there something I could tweak? And like <laughs> it's just funny like every class I'm like all right where are they at? Like I'll go find them. <laughs> like let me have that face-to-face -face talk with them and like what can I do to progress myself and um, keep myself in ownership and like of the, the things that I do like in a class where make sure I'm just going in the right direction is basically what I'm trying to say the entire time. So taking ownership of that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I love this. This is like these two are so important in my life just like as a my own core values not only here but there's like a saying and it's written literally like scribbled on this CrossFit gym uh, that I go to in California. It's uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Or how you do everything is how you do anything. You had to write the first time. The first time? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Edit how that out, Mike. Anything. anything. How you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's so true. Like, when you cut corners in one piece of your life, you, it's going to show up somewhere else. And, like, and that's something I've worked so hard on. And um, as somebody who regularly closes a gym, it would be super easy for me to, like, not help the people that are helping putting stuff away, uh, you know, not sweep chalk that's like re remaining chalk on the floor not put things up or set things up for the next day like I could literally just lock the doors and leave probably wouldn't have a job here very long but <laughs> you know like that's that's a mentality people have you know and mm -hmm. um like every your drawings night. on the whiteboard <laughs> like that's pretty awesome every single day yeah <laughs> I mean I like put effort into that because I know like how I do this is and this may sound silly to somebody, but it's literally how I will think and when I work out. It's how I'm gonna act in a relationship with somebody I care about. It's how I'm gonna be when um, my car gets run into. Like, if I am lazy or uh, slacking off here, it's showing up, it's gonna show up somewhere else where I don't want it to. And I don't even want it to show up here. So again, if, I'm, if it's happening somewhere else over there, it's gonna show up here. So. That's, again, I'm never perfect. There are not nights where I'm like, oh, I, I'm gonna sweep the freaking rope hair. But, <laughs> or I'm like, oh, maybe Jenny's coming. Like, I don't yeah. know, but you know, like there's, it's never perfect, but it's always something that is in the forefront of my mind. Um, and it's something I look forward to do now. It's like actually, uh, like the drawing. Like I couldn't save 15 minutes and not make a cool drawing, but I always look forward to doing that. Cause it's, it's something, it's like part of what it's part of my ownership here as a coach. Um, we all look forward to seeing them in the morning. You come in and we're like, let's I'll, see the drawing. I love claiming them the next morning. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, one of the, the real actionable ones for me and uh, for our staff is, is no gossip. And this one is so, so hard to do, but it is so important. And basically for me, like gossip is such a, it's such a vague term, but it is whenever you have an issue with some someone that's you know not a hundred percent positive it, it's kind of gray area or it's possibly a negative thing is when you mention that to someone else that isn't that person that's gossip yeah. and there's there's so many times that I think it most shows up as venting um, you know I'm venting about this thing I'm getting it off my chest and it's it's masked as that but it's really gossip it's putting uh, a, a wall or a barrier between you and that person that that issues with when it could have been quickly cleared up with a an uncomfortable but not as an it's it's more uncomfortable to think about than it is to actually take action on a lot of these conversations are not that uncomfortable when you actually do it um, it's just more uncomfortable to think about it but once you take that step you start to remove walls between you know you and other people and it's it's really hard to do definitely not perfect at it but having this as part of our core values is, is something that keeps it top of mind for me to whenever there's something that needs to be said say it to that person say yeah. it directly to them and i think it's it's that's one of the things that was a core value in our or my other job it was you know deliver feedback in the moment and like don't have background conversation around whatever it is that's going on between you and so and so like between you and me if we have something going on like i'm 
if I'm going and telling somebody else, like that's background conversation, that's just making it worse. And typically when I find myself having like an issue or something comes up in between me and somebody else, it's usually a problem I actually have with myself. <laughs> like it's really not even them, but it's like they're bringing out something that like bothers me about me or maybe they do something like one of my old habits and I'm yeah, like- Yeah, it's usually an old habit, Yeah, right? there, it's usually some kind of like reflection and, um, and that's why it's so like bothersome and sort of like a sticking point. But if you can kind of get into the conversation and talk about it, you're gonna end up better because of it. It's gonna, it's feedback to, you know, build you, like, or move you forward in a way. Um, but yeah, sometimes you don't even recognize that you're doing it, bef and then all of a sudden, like, you're like, oh my god, I'm talking about somebody mm -hmm. else with somebody else, and I need to go resolve that issue now. Like, <laughs> yeah. let me yeah. text them or call them on the phone or you know, find them face to face so we can have coffee or something. And I think it's it's super important, especially because like this first core value is we are family, we are in a relationship business, like that is inevitable. We talk about people all the time and we want it to be glowingly positive, but you're gonna come across a bumpy road every now and then. Mm -hmm. And you might have problems that come across the table that you had nothing to do with, yeah. right? And it's up to you to take ownership of that problem in a way where you pass it on to the group or the next person mm -hmm. in a way where you did something to help put out that fire, right? Instead of like, you know, getting the oxygen going and making that fire bigger, you actually did something to try to cool it down at least, right? Because um, I think that's a big part of owning what's around you is like not just brushing things off or making them worse for other people. I especially learned that at home. This is probably the biggest one that I take home with me. As you mentioned, Whitney, you take it into your personal life. It's like when, it, when our kids, we have my son Dylan who's four and Ariel who's two, when they have a problem, I don't just pass that on to Shannon and say like, hey, did you see all that poop on the floor? <laughs> like, it's up to me to that own that problem, you know, get out a wipe or something first <laughs> and then tell her that there's poop all over the floor. That leads yeah. us into our preview of our next episode, which is going to be the all poop episode, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> labeled the shittiest episode ever. <laughs> True story on that. Okay. Um, and our final uh, <laughs> core value is living with a growth mindset. And uh, it's something that came from another book. I don't know if it was introduced to us through this book, but it definitely hammered it home for us. Uh, the book Mindset by Carol Dweck is an awesome book, one of my favorite books ever. And uh, just this, the idea of never stop learning, never stop growing. Um, and so much of your ability to improve is the mindset you take into a new activity or a, a regular activity, it, it starts in the head and that's what enables you whether to break through plateaus or never plateau in the, be, in the beginning is to have that mindset. I yeah. know you guys are bookworms, so. <laughs> well, I think for me it was, uh, I had a fixed mindset and I was under the impression like you either have it or you don't, um, whether that was like a product of. A fixed mindset. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know what it was a product of, like an environment thing, like, yeah. you know, being in college and like being on a scholarship and then uh, like having your coaches recruit other people and then they're like take, trying to take your mm. place or sort of like, mm -hmm. but I, I came into CrossFit with a, with a fixed mindset. And so um, it was sort of like, well, I can do these, but I can't do this. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to. And the growth mindset is more of that like yeah you can't do it today but we can work at getting there or we can take steps to get there and it was literally life-changing like to be able to switch your mindset and to know how influential your thoughts are on your progress like once you're able to kind of like make the switch it's like oh like it's sort of like a little like pressure valve like oh like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm fine I'll get there and now you have an, a big opportunity for like new goals, um, new progressions, uh, keeps you motivated. No matter how good you get, you're gonna wanna get better. No matter where you're starting, you're gonna wanna improve. So I, I think it's just so important and like the more you can practice it, because I, I do believe it is like a practice, a state of mind, um, especially if there are people who just don't have growth mindsets like from birth, the more that you can practice it, the more it's just going to become like a natural thing and like if you have an hour here to practice it then it's just you're taking it out into the world and living a better life because of it yeah one of the big parts of it is like uh 
like understanding that a growth mindset doesn't mean you're always growing. It means there's actually like a lot of times where you're not at your peak because you kind of like peak, like you might PR or something, let's say, PR a hundred pound back squat. But for the next several weeks, you can't hit a hundred pounds. So you're sitting below that threshold for a while before you then hit another peak and kind of break through again. So it, it's this idea of like being okay with not being your best like every single day because it's you're going to eventually break through again and kind of hit that next thing of growth like being prepared for that yeah and just knowing like growth is not like a linear whether it's you know physical growth or mental growth emotional whatever it's never a linear path it's always kind of like up and down and like maybe it's along this linear like incline but it's it's never just straight it's always kind of taking a little bit of dips and and rises and I know that just for from training and um, training my whole life, knowing that it's the road to being and getting better isn't always putting one step in front of the other. It, it's doing that in a sense, but knowing like you're gonna get knocked down a couple of times, you're gonna get buried a couple of times, you're gonna fall a couple of times, and it's how you're you're getting back up, and it's not taking you off that path to wherever you want to be. I just I think it's also like super important to surround your surround yourself with those type of people and it's like why that it's so exciting to be here now it's like even in those simple like coaches meetings that we have it's just everyone questions stuff regardless because they want to improve in whatever the facet may be um, and it's so huge and Andrew and I were talking about this the other day one of the biggest reasons Danielle and I decided to sell our gym in the first place was because we felt like we were getting stagnant or even maybe declining maybe because of like fatigue because it was just us coaching like constantly every single day and we were just like in it the whole time but I felt like we just got to this point where like we're not really putting like the effort that we should be putting to like improve it or us so it's like we had the offer so it's like yeah let's let's take that step and like change where we're going right now in life for like the better and I think like finding this and like finding you guys who like want to better yourselves regardless of what it may be every single day it's like it's so good to be around and feel every day so yeah. for a coach it's huge like to, to have that mindset because you're not only thinking applying it to yourself as you guys mentioned but you're applying it to the people you coach mm -hmm. and like if you think they can't improve they're here you know can't get a bar overhead that's where they'll always be you're not going to be a good coach like you have to have that growth mindset not only apply it to your own life but apply it to the people you work with Right, so that you can you can foresee them getting better, right? Because it's, it's, it's going to keep you involved and engaged. It's kind of funny you say that because like we're so some of us are so ingrained in it when we're coaching on the floor that like when we're telling someone to scale back, we're doing it with the mindset they're not going to be there for very long. It's going to make them better. And sometimes we don't do a great job of communicating that because it's like, oh, I think you should go use less weight today or do do chin over bar pull ups instead of chest bar pull ups because we're like we know it could look better. And if it looks better, it will then enable you to do the higher skill, the heavier weight better later on. And sometimes we just go straight for that because we're so in that growth mindset where someone, if they're a little bit in that fixed mindset or just maybe more like trying to you know, compete that day or whatever it might be, they might not realize that, but just realize if we are doing that stuff, it's usually in the best interest. And a lot of it's because sometimes it takes those little steps backwards to take big steps forward. It just takes, it's so much patience. Like, no one really thinks about how much patience, like, getting better is. But I saw, like, Tony posted on, it was a comment to someone the other day. It's like, look where you are right now, but in, like, one year from now, if you look back at this, you're going to laugh, like, at the progress you've made in that little time. I think it was Clint's snatch yeah. video. <laughs> it was like, it's, it's true. Like, yeah. you think you're at your best right now, and you just PR, and you're, like, so happy. But, like, you have no idea if you continue on this mindset, be patient with the process, like, where you will actually be in that next year or next couple months or whatever, whatever the timetable is. Yeah. And uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff I mean, just came from our dad mind. in the gym. And uh, I mean, he was always just kind of harping on us, like, you know, never stop learning, you know, get your, get your, uh, get a hold of books, whatever it is. Um, that's how he developed his uh, real estate business was just kind of self education. And he's always been big on that. And I remember being like 10 years old in his car, just listening to Tony Robbins tapes. I'm sure he was doing it for himself, but also subtly to inject it into me. And like, that's really where it started for me is like, I mean, at the age of 10, I'm, I'm hearing these stories of Sylvester Stallone and Rocky and how he wrote that and how he got turned down a million times for a script. 
And, uh, you know, throughout my life, when I hit challenges, like I went back to, to Tony Robbins stuff and that's really where that personal growth stuff started for me. And it branched off to a lot of other different things. So I don't know if, uh, you've had similar situation, Tony. Oh, definitely. I mean, I feel like reading the book mindset was so great because it was like what our dad always taught us put into word, like finally put into like word form that we could read and like go back to and share with others. And yeah, I've, it's the most recommended book that I've ever, you know, given out to people and bought for people by far. Cool. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's all our core values. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. You'll have more next time. Thank <laughs> you.